for 45 years, NASA's Voyager spacecraft traveled through the darkness of space, getting farther from home than any human-made object has ever been. Then, suddenly, their instruments spiked. Temperature readings exploded to 50,000 Kelvin. They had just crashed into a wall of superheated plasma at the edge of the solar system. This isn't science fiction, this actually happened. And what they discovered there changes everything we thought we knew about where our solar system ends and the true void of space begin. Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll understand why scientists are calling this the most important boundary in our cosmic neighborhood. The year is 1977. Two identical spacecraft launch from Earth with a simple mission. Fly past Jupiter and Saturn, take some pictures, and send them home. But NASA engineers built something into these machines that nobody talked about publicly. They designed them to keep going, to push beyond the planets into a region of space no probe had ever reached, a region we weren't even sure existed. For decades, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 sailed through the outer solar system, past Jupiter's swirling storms, past Saturn's glittering rings, past Uranus and Neptune, and then nothing but empty space. Year after year, the spacecraft transmitted data showing the same thing. A steady stream of particles flowing outward from the sun, growing weaker with each passing mile. This was the solar wind, and scientists knew it couldn't go on forever. Somewhere out there, it had to end. But how? And what would be waiting on the other side? The answer lies in understanding what the solar wind actually is. Every second, the sun throws off millions of tons of charged particles, electrons and protons screaming outward at over a million miles per hour. This invisible storm floods the entire solar system, creating a massive bubble around the sun called the heliosphere. Everything we've ever known, every planet, every asteroid, every comet, exists inside this bubble. But space isn't empty. Between the stars, there's another kind of matter. Thin, cold gas and dust drifting through the galaxy, called the interstellar medium. Scientists theorized that somewhere billions of miles from the sun, these two forces would collide. The hot, fast solar wind slamming into the cold, dense interstellar medium. They called this collision point the heliopause. And in 2012, Voyager 1 finally reached it. The data it sent back was shocking. As it crossed the boundary, instruments detected a sudden, violent spike in temperature, from a few thousand degrees to 30,000 Kelvin, then higher, 40,000 Kelvin, then 50,000 Kelvin, nearly 10 times hotter than the surface of the sun. Voyager 1 had found the wall. Six years later, Voyager 2 crossed the same boundary, 119 astronomical units from the sun, that's 11 billion miles, and confirmed it. The readings were identical. Both spacecraft had passed through a ring of superheated plasma surrounding our entire solar system like a burning fortress wall. But here's the strange part. Despite these apocalyptic temperatures, the Voyager probes were completely fine. How is that possible? The secret is density. The plasma at the heliopause is unimaginably hot, but also unimaginably thin. There's less than one particle per cubic centimeter. For comparison, the air you're breathing right now has trillions of particles in the same space. So even though individual particles are moving at extreme speeds, there are so few of them that they can't transfer meaningful heat. The Voyagers simply glided through this inferno like ghosts, untouched but measuring everything. What causes this wall of fire? It's all about pressure. Imagine a speedboat racing across a lake. At the front of the boat, water piles up, creating a wave. The faster the boat, the bigger the wave. The same thing happens with the solar wind. As it races outward, it eventually crashes into the interstellar medium, which pushes back. The collision compresses both sides, and that compression generates heat, enormous heat. The result is a turbulent, churning boundary layer where two cosmic oceans meet. NASA scientists compare it to a bow shock, the same physics that creates sonic booms when jets break the sound barrier. Except this boom is 11 billion miles wide and burns hotter than any furnace on Earth. But the wall revealed something even more unexpected. When Voyager 1 crossed at 121 AU and Voyager 2 crossed at 119 AU, scientists realized something profound. The heliopause isn't a fixed boundary. 
It moves. It breathes. When the sun is active, blasting out more solar wind, the boundary expands. When the sun is quiet, it contracts. Our solar system is surrounded by a living, pulsing shield that grows and shrinks with the sun's 11-year activity cycle. And the data got stranger. Scientists expected the magnetic field inside the heliosphere to point in a completely different direction than the magnetic field outside in interstellar space. But Voyager found them almost parallel. The transition was smooth, not chaotic. This suggests the sun's magnetic influence reaches even farther than the heliopause itself, blending gradually with the galaxy's magnetic field rather than cutting off sharply. This matters more than you might think. That magnetic shield isn't just there for decoration. It protects us. Cosmic rays, high energy particles accelerated by distant supernovae and black holes are constantly bombarding our solar system. Most of them are deflected by the heliosphere, never reaching Earth, but some get through, and Voyager's instruments measured exactly how many. The data showed that the heliopause acts like a semi-permeable membrane, filtering cosmic radiation based on the sun's activity. When the sun is active and the heliopause expands, more cosmic rays are blocked. When the sun is quiet and the boundary shrinks, more radiation leaks through. This has direct implications for future deep space missions. Astronauts traveling to Mars or beyond will be exposed to higher radiation when the sun is in its quiet phase. Voyager's measurements are helping NASA plan for that danger. But the implications go beyond our solar system. Every star in the galaxy has its own heliosphere. Every star creates its own protective bubble. Voyager just gave us the first detailed measurements of what that boundary looks like. This is crucial for understanding exoplanets. If a planet orbits too far from its star, outside the astrosphere, it's exposed to the full fury of cosmic radiation. That radiation can strip away atmospheres, sterilize surfaces, and make life nearly impossible. By studying our heliopause, scientists can now model how other stars protect their planets. This helps narrow the search for habitable worlds. Voyager didn't just explore our backyard. It gave us a tool to explore the entire galaxy. Right now, both Voyagers are still out there, still transmitting. They're over 15 billion miles from Earth, so far that a radio signal takes more than 22 hours to reach us. Their power is fading. NASA has been shutting down instruments one by one to conserve energy. The heaters went offline years ago. Internal temperatures have dropped to near freezing. But still, they transmit Every day, faint signals arrive at Earth's deep space network, carrying measurements of plasma density, magnetic field strength, and cosmic ray flux from true interstellar space. No human-made object has ever sampled this environment before. Each data point is irreplaceable. By the early 2030 seconds, the radioisotope generators will run out of fuel. The signals will stop. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 will go silent, drifting alone through the dark, carrying their golden records, humanity's message to the cosmos, but they'll keep moving. In 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will pass within two light years of a star called Gliese 445. Neither probe will ever return home, but their mission won't end. NASA is already planning the next generation. The Interstellar Probe, a spacecraft designed to travel three times farther than Voyager, equipped with modern sensors and enough power to operate for 50 years. It will map the heliosphere in full 3D, explore the interstellar medium in detail, and answer the question Voyager couldn't. Is our wall of fire unique, or does every star in the Milky Way have one? In 1977, we launched two machines into the void, hoping to see Jupiter up close. Instead, they showed us the edge of everything we've ever known. They found that the boundary of our solar system isn't cold and empty. It's blazing with energy, alive with motion shaped by forces we're only beginning to understand. Voyager didn't just cross a line on a map, it crossed into legend. And at the edge of the sun's reach, in a wall of fire 50,000 degrees hot, it found proof that even in the darkest, most distant corners of space, our star is still fighting to protect us. The sun's heartbeat echoes all the way to the edge of interstellar space. And now, for the first time in history, we've heard it. If you found this journey to the edge of our solar system as mind-blowing as we did, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the mysteries of space. What do you think we'll discover when the next interstellar probe launches? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.